now we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. And our show right now is uh, Community Matters. And we're talking with Blue Planet Foundation about its Waypoint Report, which is very important. Uh, Melissa Miyashiro from uh, Blue Planet joins us. She's chief of staff there, uh, Blue Planet Foundation. Am I right? And uh, I'm happy to have you here, Melissa, so we can explore your Waypoint Report. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Jay. I'm delighted to be with you today. So let's talk about the report. I mean, here we are in COVID. Uh, we are mm, at, at, a, at, a, at an inflection point, at least. Uh, our, um, our, our cases are spiking. Last time I looked, it was over 200 on a given day. Wow, that is that's mind boggling. Um, and our economy, of course, is gonna follow the, that number and it's gonna further decline. Uh, we're stuck in what's gonna be a lockdown for a while, or at least a need for a lockdown for a while. Um, our tourism industry is, uh, is on its back um, and people don't know what's gonna happen or what to do. And so what a great time to look at reimagining the state, not just a diversified industry in the state, but reimagining the whole state. It's like, this is a wonderful time to be here because, because the, the creative possibilities are so enormous and, and the stakes are so high. So on that basis, with that in mind, you guys have decided to write a Waypoint report. I'm, I'm interested in how you got the name Waypoint, by the way. So can you talk about the background of, and the work involved in writing a Waypoint report uh, for the state of Hawaii at Blue Planet? Yeah, um, thanks so much, Jay. You really hit the nail on the head in, in our thinking about putting together this report and wanting to contribute to solutions for Hawaii. Um, so Blue Planet, we work on trying to solve climate change right here from Hawaii. That's already a daunting challenge in and of itself. Um, so when the COVID pandemic uh, hit and has really upended all aspects of our daily lives and our economy, we wanted to really take a look and kind of use this moment to reflect on not only our climate mission, but um, just making sure that our communities thrive as a whole. And what, how do we move forward given uh, this new reality? So we wanted to put some thought and time into thinking about what does the journey look like ahead? So we've, we've made some progress as a state and Hawaii is recognized as a global leader on clean energy. Um, so, so how do we, we leverage that global leadership position into building a just, uh, sustainable and resilient future? So that was just kind of the, the framing of- uh, I, I just want to we emphasize one thing you said, Melissa, and that is, you know, up to this point and from the beginning, Blue Planet has been involved in environment, um, which is, you know, it's, that's its middle name kind of. Uh, and then you go from there to energy because energy and environment are, are linked for sure. Um, but this is different. You've gone beyond that. You've gone, you know, further, further altruism, further community service. This is a notable expansion of your contribution to the community. And I, I just want to emphasize that. Uh, it's very important that you do environment, but it's also right now critically important that you do whatever you can. And that, and that includes reimagining the state. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, for us, it was really a matter of kind of connecting the dots. So a lot of the work that we do on clean energy and sustainability is so interconnected with all these other pieces. And I, I'm sure you felt the same with this COVID-19 pandemic. We're starting to see that all of these issues are really inter interconnected. And we, uh, as humanity, are interconnected. We are globally interdependent. So so all of those things were converging for us and we really wanted to put some time into compiling a set of ideas and kind of action pathways that we can pursue to address some of these challenges in parallel. Yeah. So, okay, so you make a decision. You wanna go further. You wanna make a contribution. You wanna you wanna wrap your various initiatives and you know philosophical notions together into this report. Uh, what is step one? Uh, how did you start that up? Who did you talk to? Who did you, you know, bring in on the thought process? 
Yeah, so um, we reached out to some of our kind of initial allies and stakeholders working on this issue. Um, and then also kind of looked back at um, the, the work that Blue Planet has done over the past several years and, and since we were um, established as a nonprofit, um, really launching in 2008 and looking at, okay, what are some of the things that are in our wheelhouse and what are some of the things that, um, you know, we, we can put out there and kind of contribute to the conversation that'll take us even farther. Um, so what we're really intending here is for this to be a starting point um, for this dialogue. So we're really seeking feedback from the community uh, so that we're really shaping this recovery together. So, um, we, you know, we mentioned in the Waypoints report that this isn't intended to be, you know, a comprehensive blueprint. Um, and this is the precise solution set uh, that Hawaii needs, but we really wanted to um, you know, kind of create some energy around innovative thinking about how we move forward on economic recovery, how we move forward on decarbonizing our economy. Because um, as devastating as COVID had, has been, it doesn't make our climate challenge disappear. So we really have to be thinking about moving forward on these things in parallel. So so this is the starting point um, where we're putting these, out, uh, these ideas out there with humility and really want to build a conversation, um, certainly now and then leading up to the legislative session next year and beyond. So this is, this is meant to be uh, evolving and to have longevity. You know, a footnote to that, I, I, I take your point about the connection between environment and COVID. Uh, and actually, I think it goes two ways. Uh, the one way is as obvious as if you if you reduce human activity on the planet, you have a lower rate of carbon emissions and, and therefore climate change moves a little more slowly. I, that's already demonstrated. We know that, we know that. Um, and it's, it's a lesson of some import because uh, it, it proves up a few things. It proves up human activity has a direct effect on climate change both ways. That's a remarkable kind of confirmation. Um, the, other, the other thing is that we live in a world of, of viruses, of bacteria, of antigens of all kinds. Um, they are with us. They have been with us forever, for hundreds of thousands of years. Um, and when we get a little too close, when we get a little too crowded, when we get a little too disrespectful of Mother Nature, uh, then they pop up on us. Uh, but they are always with us. I mean, you, you know... Uh, that, the, that the, the Black Plague uh, appeared in the 6th century and again in the 14th century. And in fact, in Hawaii, we had bubonic plague, which was a variation on that theme, in the 19th century. Um, these things are going to continue to happen. And it's, it's kind of um, an irresistible, even seductive notion that the way humankind lives um, can either increase the amount of these, these plagues or decrease the amount of these plagues. So my point is that I, I believe, and we believe here, um, that it works two ways. COVID affects climate change and climate change affects COVID. And we have to treat them together. And I'm so glad you see that, you see that connection. I think we all need to see that connection. We have to make a world that, where we're kinder and it's kinder to us. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right, Jay. That's exactly right. And I think those, some of the connections that you mentioned, you know, science has uh, established those connections, but I think people are really starting to feel them and appreciate them now in new ways. Um, and, yeah. and that, you know, that as, as devastating as this time is, we, we do have hope that what we're learning in this moment is creating momentum to, to, to do things differently going forward. So Hawaii is a laboratory. I, I think you've always seen it that way. Uh, Hawaii is a place where, you know, we are more than most places respectfully of the environment. Uh, more than most places we can hopefully get people to support the notion of being environmentally conscious. Um, and so um, it's not just that we find solutions here for ourselves, that maybe we show the world 
um, our, our special ability um, to uh, reimagine our relationship with nature and also uh, uh, help other people elsewhere reimagine uh, our collective relationship. But the question I suppose I'd like to ask you is what does that include? You talk about initiatives that already exist, initiatives that Blue Planet has worked on over the years, and now you're sort of bundling them together in a, a sort of more cohesive way uh, on this whole notion of Waypoint. Um, what are they? Uh, can you list some so we can get a handle on what you're recommending? Yeah, absolutely. So just to give a, uh, maybe a better overview of what we have outlined in report. Um, so we have identified 50 actions that Hawaii can take that, um, inter that really play in this intersection of economic growth, creating jobs, ensuring affordable access um, to, to affordable energy, and then also accelerating our transition to 100% clean energy. So we're looking at things um, with that, that intersect those different uh, ideas. Um, so we've got 50 actions, and then they're spread across seven categories. Um, and those are um, shifting our economy. So that's looking at um, things like carbon pricing, which is a, a really exciting conversation that we could probably have a three hour show about. Um, uh, but also within that shifting economy section is, I think what's on many people's minds is our reliance on um, tourism and, and really how vulnerable that's leaving us. So we've identified some actions for really positioning our tourism um, sector to transform in a way that's sustainable, both economically um, and environmentally. So those are things like, um, just to give you a, a sampling of some of the actions we've listed, um, a carbon offset program um, to offset air travel emissions that could be used to fund energy efficiency retrofits in our local community, and then also ensuring that we're positioning Hawaii as the clean energy islands of the world, because we do have success stories there, um, and, and the world needs more inspiration on climate change right now. So can we increase the number of rental cars that are electric and the number of tour buses that are electric? Um, so yeah, so that's the first section. There are, are six others ranging from um, you know, really focusing on the, the cost of energy and energy efficiency, uh, clean transportation, um, and then also just around our, our built infrastructure. So not only from, uh, you know, the, the buildings that we live in, are they, are they safe? Are they healthy? Um, but also our communities, are our communities built for cars or are they built for people? So we, we offer waypoints um, on each of those subjects. I love the term waypoint. It, it really, it, it bespeaks of inflection point, right? Because we yeah. are, and we are long away on a journey and we have to take stock because it's an inflection point. But let me ask you this way, what comes to mind on this to, to hear that is that, you know, bottom line is um, we don't have enough money to do the kinds of things that arguably would be necessary to return to some level of normalcy. Hate to use that term, it's an inappropriate term, but you know, the way we enjoyed our comforts before. Um, and um, um, our hotel industry is on its back and, and a lot of jobs are gone. A lot of the service industry job, we, we had a show a couple hours ago about restaurants, they're in deep trouble. Um, a lot of businesses are gonna fail. They are failing right now. And people aren't going to have money. They, we don't have a population in general that has a lot of money in the bank. And uh, they're, going to, they're going to get hungry and query, where's the food going to come from? Where, where's the, the, the cash for, you know, just basic things? Pay the rent, kind of, where's it going to come from? These are crisis points. And so I, I would like to hear you say that the kind of initiatives that you are advancing in the Waypoint Report will actually help us solve these uh, over, over, overpowering uh, economic problems, will they? We believe that they will. And I'm, I'm really glad that you brought up that point, Jay, because it's something that is really important to us at Blue Planet. 
Um, if you're looking at um, just living the living situation in Hawaii, even before the pandemic, Hawaii was already a, a very high cost of living location, and many um, you know young people in Hawaii were moving out of state for for you know better opportunities and higher pay and all kinds of things. Um, and even um, I'm I'm sure you're familiar with the Aloha United Way's Alice report. Um, that showed even before the pandemic, nearly half of Hawaii residents are, are already living paycheck to paycheck. So that's the situation we were in pre-pandemic. Um, and now things are, um, are much more stark and it, it's not really clear you know, when we, we might come out of that. So, so it is a really um, a daunting challenge of how we, you know, how do we make sure that we're, we're really focusing on these affordability issues that have lingered uh, for years and years. So these aren't new issues, they're just really amplified because of the COVID pandemic. Um, so how do we make meaningful change on that while we decarbonize our economy? And from Blue Planet's perspective, those two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. So, so we can move forward um, in addressing that. And we, we do try to identify some specific actions and waypoints that we think will help us get there. So, um, you know, one is really focusing on and really understanding the importance of energy efficiency. Uh, so there's so many things that we can be doing from an energy efficiency standpoint that can lower, lower monthly uh, financial burdens for folks. A lot of the discuss discussion around uh, particularly affordable housing is really focused on the upfront costs. Uh, so that's really where the, the conversation um, stays and, it is, and is dominated. But what's often overlooked are, you know, what are the, the month to month expenses and how can we bring those down with energy efficiency projects? Um, you know, so things like even just increasing disclosures um, on energy efficiency. So when you're you're renting an apartment and the landlord has chosen to pass on the utility costs to you, um, can you can you at least have some knowledge about what those utility utility costs are, so that you can you can choose what option would be best for your economic situation. Well, you know, it seems to me, we were talking about Singapore before, about how smart it was, and somehow the government keeps coming up with creative solutions to every problem. Um, and of course, they have similar problems there as we have here uh, around COVID. Um, but it, it strikes me that if you have a, a clean slate uh, or a reimagination slate, and you want to adopt these new ideas or ideas we should have adopted before, as the case may be, um, you, can, you can connect them up to things that will have a, a beneficial effect on the economy. And, and I, uh, that's what it sounds like you're doing. Um, and uh, uh, that would really, really be swell. Instead of just uh, you know, going down the road and doing it because we always did it this way, not really changing anything, uh, getting stuck in, in, in issues that, you know, that we should be reinventing, but we haven't reinvented. And, um, I feel that the report or any comprehensive look at where we are uh, can and should do that. It sounds like you're on the right path. Um, we really need to do that or we will lose our people to the mainland or you know, to a, a kind of um, a, a lower standard of living, a lower standard of intellectual life, a lower standard of community and, and in the process losing all those aloha things oh, this is, you know, very trouble. We have to preserve that. So you're in the right place to do it. So do you have traction on this? I mean, do you have champions out there who call you up every morning and say, Melissa, great. We love this. We're going to help you in every way. You have that? We have received a lot of um, encouraging feedback about the report and, keep, and folks just expressing that, um, you know, they, they were really looking for some action some action items and things that, that are tangible. And of the 50 actions, some are, you know, things that you could go out right away and execute and others are a little bit longer term kind of policy and sy systemic changes that need to happen. So, um, you know, I think there's, there's a little something for everybody. Um, but as I mentioned, this is really something that, um, 
you know, we, we just released it, released it a few weeks ago, but we, we want it to be something that we're referring back to um, and having conversations and talking to lawmakers and talking to other leaders who are tasked with really shaping our recovery efforts. Um, you know, what are, what are the pieces that feel tangible right now that we can just move forward right away? What are some of the things that, um, you know, we, we need to, to do a little bit more research on together as a community to define the specific, um, you know, for example, bill language uh, that would be considered for next legislative session. Um, so, so, yeah, I think people are excited about um, rebuilding differently and, and seizing this, this momentum. And I think this, this really yearning for change uh, mm. that we're, we're feeling in so many different aspects of our society right now. Yeah, and it has to be dynamic, doesn't it? In yeah. other words, um, we, we know this is, you know, I always say the only thing that's unchangeable is change. Uh, we're we're, we're going to have a lot of changes. We're in the middle of the most transformational time ever, um, not only here, but everywhere. And, and so the question really is, uh, how are you going to handle that? You wrote the report. It's in black and white. Um, you know, it's a, I suppose I can go on your website and get one, right? Can I do that? Um, yeah. And I can read it. Where, where would I go to get a copy of the Waypoint report? Where, where is it? We have the full report available online at waypointshawaii.org. Um, and then there's also a link through our uh, blueplanetfoundation.org website. Um, so we have the, the text of the report all on the web. And then you can also download um, the, the PDF version. Mm. That's something that you want to have um, in kind of book form that's available too. Um, and I think, you know, by... So the, the actions, we've identified an action, um, but, but then comes the work of, of implementing the action, right? So if it's a, a policy idea uh, that we wanna work with stakeholders on, then it's, it's coming together and hashing out the bill language um, or you know, speaking with lawmakers and understanding what uh, they're hearing from their constituents and what, um, what their priorities are going into the session. So um, yeah, this is, this is kind of a framework and we're, what we get really excited about is uh, bringing these, these ideas and these actions to life. That's our, yeah, our favorite thing. It's a conversation. Yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and with, as the community changes and the world changes, and it is certainly, um, the plan would change. So to be version two and three and four and whatever have, um, but the, the thing I wanted to ask you is uh, it just it strikes me that if you want to advance a plan like this, of course, you have to go to the legislators and the public officials who, who you would call on, you know, to implement some of its recommendations. Um, but you also want to go to the public because those legislators and officials are sensitive to what the public thinks. So it, it's, a, it's a conversation among both sides of that equation, isn't it? Uh, you, you have to co convince both of them that these are worthy steps, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, policy in a vacuum doesn't really get get too far. So uh, all of this work uh, is about people, even in, you know, environmental work and climate work. It, it ultimately is about people. Um, so it should be, should be shaped by people and should be uh, designed with people in mind. So am I right to think that um, most, but not all of the steps you're suggesting are legislative steps or, or, or are there other kinds of steps that you hope to achieve that are not necessarily, um, you know, incorporated in legislation? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, a big focus of our work at Blue Planet um, is, of course, um, driving change through policy. Um, you know, but, but not all of them are necessarily policy um, focused efforts or not, certainly not necessarily only for the state legislature. So some of these proposals are, are more kind of county level actions. Um, so thinking about some of the, uh, you know, permitting challenges that have, have faced um, the renewable energy industry. So some of those things that we can, can work at a departmental level, maybe within the counties. Um, yeah, so there's things from, 
from all, all different angles. Okay, you know, I hope you'll come back uh, with us, Melissa, and and uh, as as it goes by, and uh, you know, and, and rejoin us to to report on how the report is doing, and uh, how you know it is comporting with changes in the community. But you know, I, I do want to take a couple of minutes uh, here at the end of the show and put some flesh on the bones, so to speak, and let you do your picture show. Um, and <laughs> describe describe the process, uh, what happened, uh, what has happened, what is happening at Blue Planet Foundation by by way of some of the graphics uh, that you've given us. So can we do that now? Yeah. Okay. Here's a picture of bicycles. Cool. Bicycles. What is that? Yeah. So this is our team on one of our biggie to lunch days. So of course, this is when we were working in the office and we're all working from home, um, but. Definitely within Waypoint, we have um, several actions devoted to, you know, how can we rebuild and, and reconfigure public spaces so that they're not designed for cars, but they're designed for people. Um, and not just, you know, it's great to have less traffic, uh, but we need to, to get people out of cars and encouraging them to use other modes as well. So this is you a bet. team in action. You bet. Okay. What's that? Uh, yeah, this is our education director, Griff Jurgens, uh, in a classroom talking to students about climate change and things that they can do at home and in their community to be a part of the solution. A lot of our work at Blue Planet is focused on youth uh, in really equipping them with the tools that they need to succeed in this clean energy future. Okay, and that's this picture, a picture of youth now. Oh, somebody at a table, looks like Hawaii, Hawaii Public Radio, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> this is just, I mean, continue. This is great, you know, the conversation. We love to have conversations about these things at Blue Planet. Um, so we're always open to, to talking to, uh, to stakeholders, to the public, uh, to you, Jay, uh, about these important issues because we, we need everybody to be engaged in these conversations. Absolutely. Okay, what's this? Oh, looks like the Capitol. Yeah, I talked about our policy work. Um, th that is a big focus for Blue Planet. And we, we do believe that, um, you know, individual actions are important, but there are some, some large systemic challenges that, that we need to, to work on. And we do, we do that at the Capitol. Yes, absolutely. Okay, and this is the last one. Oh, there's more. No, that's it's it. It's just us, yeah. Okay, well, Melissa, we're about out of time, but I, I do want to ask you one last question. If you wanted to say something in order to leave a takeaway message with anyone watching this video, um, take a minute or two and uh, tell us what you would want them to remember about the Waypoint Report and the way, and the way forward. We designed Waypoints and picked that name because we really see this as a journey. So this is something that we are going to be uh, a, a journey that we're going to be going on together and we want people to, to shape this um, a, as a community. And this is especially important because in the coming months and years, the pull of the status quo and kind of the allure of going back to business as usual is going to be really strong. So we need to be deliberate and forward thinking if we really do want to seize this opportunity to rebuild uh, in a sustainable, just and resilient it's a tremendous opportunity for Hawaii. And uh, thank you very much for undertaking the, the work, the report, and the implementation of these initiatives. Uh, Melissa Miyashiro, uh, Chief of Staff of Blue Planet Foundation, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much, Jay. Aloha. Aloha.